it's class as really belching, but it's like I make these noises, which you'll probably hear in a minute, and I make them almost all day long, and they go away when I lay down, and um, no one's actually diagnosed it today. <coughs> but it's very embarrassing, and it's stopping me going out. <coughs> I've become socially isolated. When did all this start? Um, More or less two years ago, coming up for two years now. Do you remember what it was that happened before it started? Not really. I can't pin anything down to it, no. No, can't anything. I did have a sort of um, pains arising in the chest when I was walking or an exercise, and it started, and from there it's just gradually got worse and worse and worse. How does it affect you from from day to day? Well, I won't go out because it's so embarrassing. People just look at me and stare at me. And I've actually been laughed at as well. Um, On the station, I went out one day and some people just stood and laughed at me. So I won't go out, which means I can't get my shopping. I have to get some to do that. I can't go to the dentist and all the other things you do in your life. Go to hairdresser, go for a walk. And visit a friend because I'm so I've had enough of being stared at and laughed at, really. <coughs> you have sought help for this, haven't you? For the past two years, you've been yeah. trying to see doctors. What if they? What do they think it is? Oh, today I've had absolutely no diagnosis whatsoever, none at all. If, as I understand it, you've been to Broomfield and they've carried out two tests on you and you've been to Basildon Hospital as well, but they've referred you to London. Yes, right. I I first of all went to Broomfield and had two tests which came back negative and um, (coughs) they actually said it was all in my head. But on seeing a psychiatrist, he's confirmed that there's absolutely nothing wrong with me mentally at all other than a mild depression, which I am getting depressed because I can't go out and I've got no life. <coughs> so I'm, I'm more or less confined to the house, which is very depressing. And you've, you know, before this, you've worked and you've worked actually for the NHS as well. Yes, there was a time I did work for the NHS, and then when I retired, I've done a lot of voluntary work at the hospital, and um, I was always out every day. I was doing something, some type of voluntary work, and helping people. And then, of course, I had to give all that up. I was also on um, one of the schools as a school governor. I can't go there. I mean, you can't walk about making these noises, can you? So I don't do anything now. (coughs) Nothing at all. Read. You found that it's quite difficult to get the treatment on the NHS. Yeah. I actually have got a very nice doctor now, and he's been very helpful, and he let me go to Baston Hospital. So a nice doctor there who said she didn't have a clue, which was fair enough. <coughs> she said she worked with a doctor in London Hospital, and um, she uh, suggested I went there, so my doctors arranged all that. But it's the terrible long waiting list. I did see one doctor there again, and he said he can't help me, so I've got to wait to see this doctor Emmanuel. And <coughs> there's a three months waiting, another three months, and because he's only allowed to work 17 hours a month under national health, so you have to have this long wait. But I have arranged to see him private, which really I don't agree with this private, but what can I do? I can't face another three months waiting. I'm just getting too depressed with it all. Is the issue for you then is that you, you don't feel like you're you don't feel like you're a priority? Well, no, it's not. It's not class because I'm not terminal, which I'm very happy to say I'm not. Um, no one sees it as priority, but you see, they're not they're not the ones that are confined to their house. They're not the ones that can't go out. They're not the ones that are socially isolated, and it is it's hard. It really is hard to be socially isolated. Excuse me.